This video is sponsored by Day One Journal. What's up guys? Salut! I consider myself to be a French snob when it comes to food. I've been traveling the world in search for the finest food available out there. I've been cooking in Michelin star restaurant. I've eaten the world's best food ever. And you know what? After all this, I came to the conclusion that nothing <laughs> can touch a potato chip. Especially this one, supermarket chips. Very pale, super thin and super crispy. Now, obviously, I'm not only a foodie, I'm also a chef. And the chef inside of me is telling me, how hard can it be to make a potato chip? What could possibly go wrong trying to make a potato chip? It can't be rocket science, can it be? Let's find out. Potatoes, oil, and salt. I went for the most basic potato available. It says French fries on it, and I thought, if it's good for French fries, it should be good for potato chips. Let's just grab one. That click is satisfying. So, in case you're living on planet Mars, this is an apron that I designed and that I sell on my own website, salutcompany.com. I'll post a link in the description if you want to get one. I'm going to peel it and then I'll slice it and then I'll fry it. So, I'm going to try to cut these very thin. I think that I can manage to do it with a knife, so I'll try it this way. Phase one done. So let me just heat up some oil. While the oil is heating up, I want to talk about something. Potato chips are not crunchy. They are not snappy. They are crispy. And a crisp is produced by the multiple breaking of layers. In order to do that, I should potentially use very hot oil for this slice of potato to puff up to almost create bubbles. Okay, so I need to know the temperature of this oil. I'm not even gonna use a thermometer. I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. You stick the handle of a wooden spoon in there and if you've got some strong bubbling action, then the oil is ready to fry. I'm gonna have potato chip in a few seconds. It's too easy. Oh, wow, that's the sound I want. Okay, let's go in. Right, let's talk about today's sponsor, Day One Journal. So I have noticed that writing in a journal relieves much stress from me. It is a very healthy habit that I love to maintain. I also love to capture images every day about the food that I eat or the adventures that I live. Scrolling through all the memories uh, can help me understand how I have improved my game in terms of cooking, but also in terms of framing and photography. Now, when it comes to my paper journals, I rarely go back to reading any post in there. But then, at some point, I started using the Day One Journal app. Day One is the number one journaling app on the Apple App Store, and it provides journalers, old and new, with a breadth of features that make daily journaling a breeze. Whether you use a journal to keep your personal thoughts in order, or to log your life, 
travel, food or fitness journeys, Day One helps you keep your information in an organized and secure place. I really enjoy the unlimited storage and photos and the fact that I can have multiple journals, one for my food and recipes, one for my creative ideas. The app also offers unlimited voice to text transcription, meaning that when I don't have time to write down in the journal, I can make voice notes. These are always helpful. Try Day One Journal today. Go to dayoneapp.com slash Alex and use code Alex to unlock a limited time offer of a two month free trial of Day One Premium. That is D A Y O N E app.com slash Alex and see why it is the number one journaling app out there. Thank you, Day One Journal, for sponsoring this video. The oil is ready to fry. Okay, let's go in. Uh, little too strong. Maybe I just want a little too high maybe on this batch. Coloring a bit fast. Let's just get them out. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Right, so let's see what we got. I'm not gonna lie, this is not exactly what I expected. We've got a sticky situation going on. Let's go for one. It looks a bit oily. Good news, you heard it. The crisp is there. Bad news, the taste is pretty bad. Burnt, bitter. Ugh. They are not like evenly colored, okay? Which also means that my knife skills might not be as Japanese as I thought they were. This one is like a rock. On this side, it's pretty thin. On this side, thick as a brick. Ah, no. <laughs> so disappointing. This soft AF. <laughs> This just reminds me of exactly what I do not want to make. Let's talk about potato chips for a second. On one hand, you've got the regular potato chip. Super thin, super crispy, and pretty pale in terms of color. Now, there is another style of potato chip called kettle chip. These are thicker, crunchier, and they have more color to them. The fact that they have more color means that there's a touch of bitterness in the flavor. I'm not a big fan of kettle chips. In fact, I think they suck. The TV potato chip is the holy grail of the potato chip. Just to put things into perspective, I started from this color. This is the raw potato slice. And I ended at this color. This is the ideal. This is the finish line. This is the supermarket chip, this one. How on earth do they manage to make a crisp without changing the color? <laughs> Sorcery. Let me do another batch, okay? So I'm thinking, first, I need to cut these more evenly. So instead of using a knife, I might use a mandolin. Then to prevent stickage, I might need to wash them or to dry them or both of these operations in order to remove the starch, which I'm thinking might be responsible for the sticking. And last, to avoid this type of color and the bitter flavor, I'm gonna try to cook those potato chips at a lower temperature for a longer time then. Okay? Sounds like a plan? Let's do it. So I've got way less browning on this one. I've even got some bubbles on these. They've been sitting in the oil for two, three minutes. I'm gonna get one out, just as a reference. My potato chips right now are still very pale. 
but I'm thinking the center is starting to slightly brown, the edges also slightly as well. So it might be time to remove them if I want them to be very pale. So let's just remove them. They look promising because they are pale, exactly the color that I wanted. And they are fluffy, they have bubbles, they are all curly. Uh, how am I supposed to dry them? Like they, they, there's something weird. The sound is right or the sound is not right? No, the sound doesn't seem to be right. It's way lower. It's not the same tone. Now, there's a little problem over here. <laughs> I don't think potato chips are made to be flexible. It's like soft, chewy. I don't know, a bit crispy on the edge. No, this is bad. I really wanted to get that pale color that you get from store-bought potato chips. So I had to get them out because they were starting to brown. But now the crisp is gone. And they did not stick to one another. I mean, at least that's one improvement. So washing them and patting them dry was doing something. I'm gonna put them back just to see if I, at least I can get the crisp or not. Super quick. Let's just put them back. They are browning way too quickly. Let's just get them out and see. Salt. The flavor is a little too much. It doesn't look burned and yet it tastes burnt. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, that's for sure. There is something that I clearly haven't understood, but I don't know what they are doing right. They must be doing something to these chips. But clearly, I'm missing something in the process. I'm a failure. I'm a big, big failure. I've tried everything, but it just doesn't work. Uh, I can get the right flavor, I can get the right texture, but I can't get the right texture and the right flavor at the same time. Now, in my abysmal despair, I've even checked on uh, YouTube tutorials, but everybody's making kettle chips. I mean, the only videos that I've seen online where they were actually making regular potato chips were videos shot in factories. I mean, these guys are the only one right now making real potato chips. Potato chip factory. I'm not sure they would open their doors for me. But maybe we should give it a try. Huh? We should give it a try. Catch up in the next one. Bye-bye. Salut.